Well, 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 good morning, West Ham fans. Extra long one because I know you hate it. Now, let's talk about Danny Krajinski and his growing influence at the club. Yes, everybody, Russell and the West End Network. Hope you're safe and well. Happy Thursday. Day closer to the weekend. And also, a day closer to me holidays. Now, I might not have mentioned it, or maybe in passing occasionally, um, going on my holidays. And I cannot wait. I'll be honest, I cannot wait. Uh, counting down the minutes until I go. Um, but also, many people are counting down the minutes until David Moyes goes as well. Um, and obviously, Sunday being the last game under the current Moyes era. Um, as we travel to the Etihad in the title deciding weekend, and we're we're involved in that, you know, so that's exciting. Not in winning the title, but being involved in the title deciding, um, you know, results. So we shall see what happens. And obviously tomorrow we'll have the de- last David Moyes press conference. Anton will be doing the watch along on Sunday. Um, I may well make an appearance. Who knows? Who knows? But one person who is making an appearance and more more growingly more more influential um, within the board is Daniel Krajinski. And that's what we're going to talk about today. According to a great article in Clarence Hugh, and actually, uh, which was paraphrased by, um, or, or summarised rather, by Sean on Twitter, West Ham Football, on or Twitter X, whatever you call it. Um, it talks about the growing influence that Danny Krajinski is having within the club. Uh, we know he's the second largest shareholder, uh, David Sull- Sullivan being the highest shareholder than him. Um, and his consortium, 1890 Holdings, according to reports, is reportedly playing a more prominent role in shaping the club's future strategy. Um, it's been claimed that Krajinski may have been the driving force behind the departure of David Moyes and their imminent arrival of Julian Lopetegui. Now, sorry, Lopetegui, Lopetegui J-Lo. I always get criticised, so I'm just calling J Lo. And then no one can moan. Actually, people do moan. If it's Jules, 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 baby, Loppy, whatever you call it. There's so many different names. We're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll improve that. We'll get a better nickname for him. But um, as I said, for many, they've seen Danny Krajinski as almost like a, a silent partner, really. Um, and, you know, when he first took, bought that 27%, there was hope maybe that he was going to go for a full takeover. Uh, that was never going to happen because of his ownership with Sparta Prague. And we've spoken about that. And we've got um, the UA from FIFA looking at multi-club ownership, MCOs at the moment and trying to, you know, lessen the rules in terms of pl- teams playing in the same tournament and things like that. There's loads of, there's loads of stuff going on about that. However, it does seem to be a changing of the guard in terms of philosophy um, and in terms of strategy. Now, this coincides with reports that he was instrumental in the decision for West Ham to appoint a footballing director, a director of football, which inevitably became Tim Steinem. Um Now, you can see... To me, that could bear fruit, in all honesty. Um, we know Sullivan likes to play it safe, and with Moyes, he's a safe pair of hands. Doesn't matter what you think in terms of the style of football, he'll pretty much guarantee you mid a mid-table finish each season. Sometimes if it if all the pieces and he has a bit more luck, then he goes up a few spots. If a few things haven't happened, he might go down a few spots, but he'll always maintain that Premier League sort of um, survival. And, you know, when the club, he, you know, budgets every year, I believe Sean said for 11th, that sort of gives you an inclination in terms of the strategy of the ownership and, and the way the club wants to go. He wants to be a steady Eddie and compete and pick up the money and, you know, that type of thing. From a Stein perspective, he obviously wants to see return on investment. So he wants to get into the latter, you know, European co- competitions. He wants to make money on on transfers and things like that. So having a having a director of football in place made perfect sense. And indeed, may, move, transitioning from 
maybe David Moyes, who's a very much an old fashioned manager, so to speak, to someone like J Lo, who is by all accounts a coach first and foremost. He's not a manager, he's a coach and a very, very good one by all accounts, according to his mate Gillian Balaguer. Um and others as well. And Dave, Dave Talking Walls. <coughs> He spoke quite very complimentary when we interviewed him about that as well. So we tried to get some sort of a balanced opinion there. Um, I, I find it really interesting because it seems that he's having more and more influence. He hasn't, obviously, we know that David, David, Sull- David Gold, rather, the, the gold shares were up for sale, or percentage were up for sale. Nothing seems to have happened with that. But I just find it interesting that he is using that financial muscle in terms of 27% of the shares to garner more control or more say and in, and actually using that influence rather than necessarily being a silent partner. Um, and if it seems like, you know, Kuczynski's influence may have extended beyond, you know, the manager change into the appointment of Tim Stein or the, the appointment of a director of football, um, the actual appointment of Stein and was, is, is up for debate who, you know, I, I think, Mark Noble had an influence on that, to be honest. Um, but it's, although his growing influence appears undeniable, when's it going to end? You know, as he flexes muscles enough to get what he wants, he's going to sit back. Is he going to carry on flexing his muscles? Because he's got, you know, a, a decent track record in that respect in terms of business, not necessarily in football, but in business. Um, He's at the moment looking at buying Atos, uh, the French company. Um, he was looking at doing, was it almost a full, uh, or, or in, increasing his stake in Royal Mail as well. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next 12 months, say. You know, if JLo becomes a success, that's another tick in his box, which again, Sullivan might look at and go, actually, we do seem to be working a little bit more on the right track now. We're acting a bit more like a big boy company, you know. My, that's what my my boss said once, you know. Rather than uh, an old boss is like, you know, we're like a family business, but actually, we want to be competing in there, you know, in the top, you know, top companies. So we got to act like a big boy company, and we start. And it seems that we're starting to act a little bit more like a big boy company. It looks like, you know, and and this is heavily influenced by Krajinski, you know, who is a you know very very rich man. His wife's a very, very rich woman as well. Um, and be, it'd be interesting to see what happens going forward. I don't think there'd be no talk of a takeover at all from him at all, because particularly under the MCO rules and things like that, he still loves Sparta Prague. So there still be will be a uh, an affiliation with that. And so there'd be no full takeover, but it'd be interesting to see where this influence, if it carries on. Um, and this summer could be really interesting. The appointment of Tim Stein as a, as a director of football, the, the appointment of him basically taking over recruitment from David Sullivan, really, in essence, the the ability to for the manager to not veto because where it has happened now, and you know we know in this in January, a number of players were presented to Moyes and he vetoed them, whether he smelt a rat. And thought that he was going to be kicked out eventually. Who knows? We can only speculate on that. I think he probably he's not he's not stupid, boys. I think he's I think he thought that was going to happen. So, you know, not sabotage the season, but show that he knew best. And we know what's happened now. I think it's gonna be really interesting. Really interesting. And you see the types of players we've been linked with. The fact that, we, you know, I, I fully expect us to be linked with over 200 players by the end of August, in all honesty, just because every agent and their dog's going to be <coughs> sending us players to look at. But I just thought it was really interesting. It was a great, art- great, you know, great article in the um, in Claren here, as I said, and uh, Sean uh, on West Ham Football slash X summarised it brilliantly. Anyway. Take care, stay safe, stay warm, stay humble. May well be doing a Russie Rumour Roundups because there are so many rumours later on at lunchtime, but keep an eye on the channel and you'll find out if we do. Much love.